again and if you want to be on our feet, you can, or if you want to sit, you can too as well. Yeah, dear Sempari Kofa, I'm You're so good. 
Again, I remind counselors to make sure that you register your presence at the registration desk. I'll now invite the chairman of the occasion, our national head, Apostle Osoe to give us the opening address. Let's welcome him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we are very, very grateful to God for this opportunity to once again meet as counselors of this great church to review the work we did in the previous year, 2021. On this note, I would like to give the open address, then we officially open the meeting. Members of the Board of Trustees, ministers, and wives, counselors, then also invited guests, auditors, and fellow leaders. It is with much joy that I welcome you all to the end of 2021 National Council meeting. And I would like to say, praise the Lord. Ebenezer. God has brought us this far. Today, we are gathered to review our operations for 2021 and ask God for more grace for 2022. We shall reflect on the goodness of the Lord. 
assess our performances and motivate ourselves through the word of God to do better in the year 2022. For our God is a progressive God. So I'm grateful for what God has done in 2021 and very delighted to see that he's been faithful despite the many challenges. We all know the challenges we went through 2021. Despite the many challenges we went, um, we were subject to in 2021. So on behalf of the National Executive Committee, I express our heartfelt gratitude to you all for the great work done. Turn to somebody and say to him, well done, well done. In fact, the numerical, financial, and spiritual, and other operational indicators show that we have all worked hard, and God has blessed our efforts. So as we review 2021 activities, it is my prayer that we will carefully identify our key enablers of growth and seek to improve them. Fellow counselors, in 2022, you will have to work harder. This year, please, you have to work very, very, very hard. Pray more and be disciplined in all our dealings with God and ourselves. We must comply with deadlines and apply ourselves fully to our duties. More will be required of everyone in 2022. We are further entreat that we walk in a manner worthy of our calling, as Ephesians 4.1. So let us be truly holy, humble, and gentle, bearing with one another in love as we seek to Equip the church as an army of the Lord to possess the nation. Let us further endeavor to maintain the unity of the spirit bond, togetherness, unity. Let us further endeavor to maintain the unity. Without unity, without oneness, we cannot make it. So let us make every effort to maintain that unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. For where there is peace, God has commanded his blessings, as we all know in Psalm 133, verse 3. Once more, I thank you all for attending this important meeting, and I pray that his spirit will overflow in our hearts and drive us to contribute according to his will. So on this note, I declare this end of year 2021 National Council meeting duly open in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> boss, can I continue? He's my boss. And before I bring the word of God, I would like to just all sing from our Pentecostal hymn book. Jesus, let me ever be. You can find it in our book, 194, number 194. Um, Pastor Derma and Pastor Kubia, if I run, oh, even Apostle George can also help me, yeah. They also have a golden voice. Jesus, let me ever be 
firmly granted upon thee. Ever in thy work abide, ever in thy wounds reside. We'll try to sing all the verses. Do you have them? Shall be on our feet, please, with all respect. If you can. If you can. Jesus, let me ever be firmly grounded upon thee. Ever in thy word. Oh, Jesus. 
bubbles and I'm trying to control my motion and open to Matthew 20 26 But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Some version says servant. I 
I repeat, that it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. I want to talk briefly on leadership, about six or five essential for spiritual leadership. The text that we just read is referring to leadership. And basically, leadership in the context of Christianity is different from the secular world. The secular has its own way of leading leadership. And in, in Christ, in the church, also has its way of leading or serving the church. In short, in leadership in the church, it's servanthood. We have been called to serve, we are servant leaders. So therefore, we shouldn't copy what the world is doing. But one person that we should emulate, copy, is our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. He's our model. He's the one we should copy. And as we learn from him, we're able to lead the church and lead it well to a successful end. So therefore, I would like to give about six essential um, spiritual virtues or points that can help us to lead and lead the church very well. And this essential I can also call it vows. You can vow to yourself as a leader. But this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. These six essentials, let me say this, are non-negotiables. But I believe if you have to commit to it if you are going to be the kind of leader God wants you to be. These things that I'm trying to talk about it are non-negotiables. You definitely need it. I definitely need it. And if I want to be a kind of a leader God wants me to be, then I have to have or commit to them as a leader. You see, at times, leaders are always defined by the standards they set for themselves. That's how people define us, sees us. Not standards set by other people, but set by ourselves. The way you carry yourself, the way you conduct your life, the way you do things, that will let people define who a type of leader you are. And therefore, Great leaders always expect more for themselves. So I want to challenge ourselves that we will do more. We will give ourselves totally, fully to God, both spiritually, physically, and every aspect, every fiber of our leadership. I want to give more to God and to the church. So great leaders always expect more from themselves than they do from their followers, and they willingly put forth more effort. That is quality of leadership. Yeah. If you want to have a quality leadership, yeah. give more of yourself. Yes, if you were to take the phrase, make every effort, that's The point I want to make it here, that phrase, make every effort. 
If you want to take that faith, make every effort. And I want to look it at in New Testament. You find that that faith appears about six different times. Make every effort as a leader to have a quality leadership. And when you look at those usages of that phrase in the New Testament, you find what are called, as I said, vows or essential for a spiritual leadership. You can never be a good leader, a quality leader without those phrases. About five or six. So now, let me spell them now and we'll take them one by one. Second Peter 3.14 to Make every effort to become spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Make every effort. Make every effort to become spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Hebrews 12, 15. Make every effort to live at peace with all men. Make every effort to live at peace with all men. Whether it's their fault, doesn't matter. Make every effort to, meet, to live at peace with all men and all women. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root, no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defy many. Yesterday I was chatting with my brother Kweku and I said to him, that bitterness is more than that deadly disease. Bitterness. It's dangerous. And as a Christian, as a leader, don't allow, don't give bitterness an inch in your, in, 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 in your leadership or in your lifestyle. Never. Then Hebrews 4, 11. Anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work just as God did. Let us therefore make every effort to enter God's rest. Make every effort. So that make every effort, we need them. Without them, you can't be a quality good leader. Without them, you can't serve God and serve you well. Definitely, we must commit to them. And as we have them, able to lead and shine as a star. Romans 14, 19. Let us make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. I'm saying this as my last words. And I'm praying that the Spirit of God will never leave this church, especially the leaders. But God will use you and do greater and greater and greater things to accomplish his will and purpose in this church. Ephesians 4.3 Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Then C. Peter 1, 5 to 8. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness. To goodness, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. And to perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. We don't want any leader to be ineffective. We don't want our ministers to be ineffective and unproductive. 
We want our ministry to be effective and productive. Our elders are Dickens and Dickenses. All the uh, uh, presbyters, even our members, want the church to be a church. Now, people can witness and see the power and the grace of God upon this church. And therefore, leaders, let arise. And as we arise and keep this, make every effort in our leadership, we will to be effective and productive and do the things God wants us to do. So I believe if you take these six, make every effort, statements, and make them personal vows in your life, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. You find that these qualities will increase your effectiveness as a leader to accomplish the purpose and intentions of God will concerning your ministry and the church. I think I can stop here. I think I can stop here. It's enough. The, 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 the Bible itself has explained itself. Let me take them one by one. Just the headlines. Just <laughs> the headlines. One, as a leader, I vow to maintain my integrity as a leader. That's what you should do. Vow to maintain your integrity. The bottom line or the foundation of all leadership is integrity. Without integrity, you can't call yourself a leader. Now, see chapter 314. Make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. It's integrity. Then what does it mean to be spotless and blameless? Does it mean to be perfect? No, I'm not talking about perfection. No one can be a perfect here. Only God is perfect God. I'm not talking about perfection, but I'm talking about how we will do our lives and make our lives to become spotless and blameless and reflect the character of Christ. Of course not, because none of us are perfect. But it does mean to have integrity. Though we are not perfect yet, but still, we should have integrity. How do you maintain integrity if you are not perfect? By being, one, transparent. Be a transparent leader. Two, be authentic. Be yourself. Three, being real and also vulnerable. And also by not hiding your faults. If you're a leader and you make a mistake, admit your mistake. And apologize. After all, who are you? Those who hide their faults, the Bible says, will fail. But those who confess them and forsake them get a second chance. Hallelujah. So please, because of time, let me just leave the headlines then. then. Having integrity also means living what you say you believe. You walk the truth. You walk the talk. You walk the talk. You walk. You don't just teach it, but you model it. This is a challenge for real leaders. We don't just come and take the Bible and teach it, but we model it. We live it. It's my prayer. Now may the hand of God, may the power of God, may the spirit of God engulf us. And as we are in the year of equipping, may he equip us to the point that people will find us as 
people of integrity, men and women of integrity. We are transparent. We have nothing to hide. And as we live this kind of life and ministry, the church will grow from grace to grace and glory to glory and strength to strength. Hallelujah. Two. As a leader, I vow to forgive those who hurt me. This job that you are doing as leaders, whatever you do, people will hurt you. Whatever you do, people will hurt you. So when they hurt you, vow to yourself that I'll forgive. Doesn't mean we don't discipline. We discipline. But we forgive. The Bible says, make every effort to live in peace with all men. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up. That word and the light, that bitter root grows up. If you are a man or woman, you don't know how to forgive. Forgive bitterness. Huh. Bitterness. Bitterness will be. I don't know how to put it or describe it. I'm not sure. And when you are leading with that spirit of bitterness, I can tell you, and I can, I can show you that we don't have any access, no way, the presence of God. Because God doesn't work with people with bitterness. Why? Because it causes trouble and defies many. Bitterness will defile you. Bitterness will make you unworthy. Bitterness will not take you to the presence of God. So therefore, my beloved brethren, don't allow any bitterness in your life. At times, it's difficult to forgive, but because of the Holy Ghost in us, in you and in me, make every effort to forgive people. And don't entertain any bitterness in you. And if you are able to do that as a leader, I can tell you, God will take you very far. He'll take you very far. Just because of your spirit. Amen. Then let me move on because I want to finish this meeting on time. Why not? Three, as a leader, I will relax and trust God. I always tell people that the work that we are doing is not from our own strength, experience, and power. It's a ministry that we have received from God. If you read the Bible, say so we have received the ministry. And therefore, God has given us the ministry. So, we don't have any power of our own. We don't have any strength of our own. Even if you're able to preach, it's not by your might. By the grace of God. So, therefore, why don't you relax and rest in the Lord? Hallelujah. Something inside working on the outside. So, as you relax and, and rest in the Lord, the power that God has invested in you, the power. We are the uh, repository, uh, repository power of the Holy Ghost. So that power in us will take you and lead you and use you. And you, know, you, you won't struggle too much but because God is doing the work through you. Hallelujah. You are just a vessel and an instrument in the hands of God. So relax and trust in him. And so relax and trust in him to use you to do whatever he wants you to do in the church. Amen. Then four. As a leader, I'll be an encourager. As a leader, do your best to encourage people. Don't demotivate people. 
that motivates people. You can do it. This year, let me say it. Patrick, permit me to say it. Um, our youth conference, the leadership of the youth wanted to bring somebody answered. And I said to them, said, no. You. You can do it. There's power in you. Who is coming from our side? Who is he? What has he got you don't have? Hmm? So let's encourage one another. Encourage your sister. Encourage your brother. Because God has called you and God has put something in you. So therefore, as to trust in God, praise the Lord. Yeah. When you stretch, hmm? when you stretch, the instinct in you, when you stretch, the instinct in you will come out. So stretch. Especially the young ones. Yeah. Look up to Jesus. Hmm? Don't underestimate yourself. And stretch. I want to stretch. You see, there's something in you, unique and powerful. Even than those we think they are powerful. Hallelujah. So we need to encourage one another, and as we encourage ourselves, God will use us together to build his church. Five. As a leader, I'll be a peacemaker. Some leaders don't want peace. Always they try to cause confusion and problem by dividing and rule. But as a leader, as a pastor, as an apostle, as an area head, this is a pastor, as a special elder, as a deaconess, women's ministry leader, try to promote peace. As the Bible says, where there is peace, that's where God commands his blessing. I am praying, I am praying, that the peace of God, may the peace of God that transcends human understanding be filled in this church in Jesus' name. May every single person in the church, every believer, ministers, may them experience the peace of God. Peace, that's not from the world. Peace, that's from above. That bring. God's blessings, God's protection, and God's provision upon his people. Peace. Peace. Live at peace with your brother. Live at peace with your sister. Live at peace with everyone. Don't think you are live at peace. And while peace is at work, we see the hand of God in the church. Amen. Then the six. As a leader, I will never stop growing. That's Another tricky bit of our leadership. We shouldn't think that we have arrived. As an apostle, don't think that because I'm an apostle now, I've arrived. You haven't arrived. We haven't, you haven't seen anything yet. You still need to grow. I still need to grow. Even if, I'm, if now I'm going to retirement, I still need to grow. I need to grow. I haven't finished. Until I lay six feet here. But not yet. No, 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 no. Okay. Give me about 100 is too much. <laughs> Give me about 40. 40, that will be fine. <laughs> 40, that I can go peacefully. Yeah. Huh? Give me 40 and give mommy the same 40. 40, 40. I want to go together. <laughs> I don't want to leave her behind. No, no, no. Together. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let's live our peace with one another. And as we live our peace with one another, God will be with us. Then, don't stop growing. Yeah. Mature your leadership. 
mature your spiritual life. Develop a spiritual life. Fasting, praying, meditating, fellowship with godly people, and thinking right. Have a clean heart. And as you mature in leadership, God will take the light in you. And the potential in you also will come out to be used by God. Amen. So, let me end here. And my prayer is, may the power of God, may the presence of God, may the favor of God, may the grace of God, may God's anointing rest upon you leaders and stand firm in the Lord and avail yourself that God will use you to build this church that this church will be one of the best church in Europe that people will run and come and see the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we be on our feet? Give us thy grace, O Lord. O thy grace. We need. O thy grace. O Lord. We need. O Thy grace. <laughs> but there is something God wants his people to do. Mm. Understanding your spiritual calling, spiritual leadership. Mm. We have assessed ourselves and we have seen areas we fall short. Mm. How have you been leading your church as an apostle, as a pastor, as an elder, as a deacon and a deaconess? We need the grace of God to be able to please the one who has called us. We need the grace of God to be able to function, to live at peace with all people, to be able to assess the presence of our maker. Shall we pray? Pray, pray, pray. Ma 
One of the things that challenged me. When you are a leader who does not realize that you have made a mistake and you persist and persevere, the world leaders sometimes boast of the nuclear weapons that they have and it's threatened. But in the spiritual realm, the moment things are going wrong, you have to admit, as a minister, as a minister of God, you are assessing yourself. At this end of year, how many people are we frustrating? How many people have we caused pain? How many people have we made them leave the church as a minister? Do you admit your calling? Do you admit your mistakes? Put the hands up. Touch me one more time. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, Lord. Jesus, touch me one more time. Just one more time. Hallelujah. Touch me one more time. Oh, I am here. Touch 
close I would want to go over what the national head has allowed God the Holy Spirit to pour to his people as he departs we need to make every effort to provide quality leadership and then he has made it known that the way God's children lead is different from the way world leaders lead. Yes. And for that reason, we should try, endeavor, make things transparent, admit our mistakes, live to do what you say, forgive those who hurt you. As we stand here, we have all been hurt. And God doesn't want us to leave this place today going away as people who have been hurt. God is present today to work on us, to change our future and make sure that his will concerning his church comes to pass. Amen. Do not have any bitterness. As leaders, we must trust in God because we do not have any power of our own. We have to be encouragers. We, meet, we need to be at peace and live at peace with everyone. We need to seek our growth spiritually, continually. All these things are done through the power of God, the Holy Spirit. So when he touches us, no matter how dry and how withered we might be, we shall be refreshed. Let the dew of heaven bring us a refreshing to us
stand before you this afternoon, O oh Lord. We marvel at your wondrous deeds. The work that you have done in your church. Mighty Lord, make us see your faithfulness, your ability. Mighty Lord, to perform whatever you have said you would do. But in order for us, O oh Lord, to be pleasing and acceptable unto you. You have reminded us this afternoon and morning that we need, we need to lead and provide quality leadership. Mighty Lord, we fall short in the light of your word as a result of what people have said, what they have done against us. Lord, we are bitter. Mighty Lord, we have not been so honest. We live contrary to what sometimes we preach. And mighty Lord, because you are faithful, you would want your children to have a new, a new mind, change of heart. And for that reason, this afternoon and morning as we stand before you, Lord, we confess our shortcomings. The dew, mighty Lord, that falls from on high is able, O oh Lord, to bring health and life to every withered leaf and life. And for that reason, anoint us anew. Oh Lord, even as we seek, mighty Lord, to grow in knowledge, we pray that you would take away complacency and cause your church to grow. Your leadership is before you, mighty Lord, from your apostles, ministers, pastors, evangelists, oh Lord, elders, deacons, deaconesses, and Lord, our sophomore means. We empty ourselves, even as we move away from here. We pray that you would cause your spirit to work something in us. That would enable us, O oh Lord, to provide that quality, spiritual leadership you would want us to do. Because of thy faithfulness, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for, mighty Lord, imparting your leadership. We pray, bringing the verses that you used before you, that even, O oh Lord, as he continues to seek you, that you would continue to direct and strengthen him. That your peace, that your presence, that signs and wonders follow the preaching of your word and the prayer we have made in Jesus' name. Shall we shout a big amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we bless our fathers, our national head, and our bosses? Let's bless them. Oh, do it better. Do it better. So with Chairman's permission, we will take a short break now.